everybody. Beautiful hot day in Minnesota here. High 96, high humidity. So I apologize if the camera lens is fogging up. It looks like it might be. My glasses are as well. But today we're going to make some ribs. And we're going to make them on this barbecue here. And oh yes. Yes, everything is foggy. So we might try to wipe that lens off. But uh, yeah, never made ribs on the grill before. But um, yeah, let's see how it goes. And moisture just kills cameras. But anyway, first thing we're going to do here is go ahead and set the camera down. And I apologize if this continues to fog up as we go. But pull the cover off the grill. This is a, an expert grill, just the Walmart brand charcoal grill. Go ahead and open her up. I'm going to go ahead and prep this for uh, what we're doing today. Um, start by just pulling the grate off. And then pushing down all of the ash from the last time that we ran the grill. I only recently learned how to use this, but it's been pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and pull the ashtray out and dump it. in and uh, go and grab the charcoal. All right, next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put that charcoal in here. I'll use again the expert grill instant lighting charcoal briquettes. So they don't like fighting. This, I'm actually going to use a fair number of them. It's got or so. so we're gonna pour that in there and then spread these out. Uh, basically where the ribs are gonna go. So long line in the middle. And so that's in there. And then move this away. Go ahead and scrape the grill off. Now you're supposed to do this when the grill's still hot from the previous time, but usually I don't come back out here after the grill's done. Um, I'm usually eating. So I do want to get these cleaned off though. So get that all cleaned off. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and light it. And so, so you can see how I got that pattern in there. We got this nice pile it's maybe two or three in some places three bricks deep um, it goes across the whole middle of the grill here and so we set this down and in spite of the fact that these are instant lighting briquettes still use lighter fluid just get a nice soaking of lighter fluid all around there I don't overdo it but I do try to get every piece of charcoal wet wait about 20 seconds Stand back a little bit and then light it up. Oh, and the other thing we got to do before it gets too big is open the vents on the side. I always start these things with all four vents open. Move this off of here. Yeah, we want to move everything safe distance away. And so uh, that's going to cook for a bit, getting all the charcoal on fire. Um, and then once that fire dies down, we'll go ahead and um, close it, get the temperature up to about 300 degrees, and then uh, go ahead and start our cooking. All right, pardon my smoke. Um, whew. Oh, it's going to sting my eyes. All right, now that the flames calmed down a little bit, um, go ahead and got our aluminum foil out here, or tin foil out here. Got our ribs, got some seasoning, got some seasonal salt, and uh, what we're going to do is cut this open. So, cut this open here, and 
This is a five and a quarter pound rib spare rib rack. Gonna cut this right open. And then uh, I'm gonna grab my paper towel here. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and extract the rib meat from the, uh, from the packaging. Try not to spill too much of the juice. There's not really a whole lot of juice there. Whew, that is smoky. Alright, I'm going to put that back down. Be right back. And now we're going to pat dry the ribs so they're not wet at all, so they're not wet much, and they weren't that wet to begin with. And the front and the back. Oh, we got ourselves a little hole in the tinfoil there, so not a great sign. But hey, we're going with it. And then, alright, so now that's off. Just toss that down there. Um, I was told that it's not a bad idea, they call it peeling off the silver skin, which I think is this right here. You say it comes off in one piece and makes the ribs a lot easier to eat. Mm. So that must not be it. Hmm. Well, anyway, at this point we can go ahead and start putting the uh, spices on here and then we'll seal that up and, and get that inside the, uh, the grill. Alright, now the grill temperature is getting a bit hot. So we're going to go ahead and close the lower air vents try to get the fire burning cooler so the nice charcoal coals now All right. and the way I'm going to do this I'm going to get one hand full of messiness and the other hand I'm going to keep clean so I can open and close the containers so I start with the seasonal that all on the back side of the ribs and then go ahead and open this. Okay, that container's empty. So we'll go ahead and move on to this container. Master brand um, it's called Tennessee Apple Butter. It's really good. Really good on steaks, anyway. I don't know how it's going to be on this. Should be pretty good, though. So, we'll go ahead and rub that in. Again, season all first. And then the Tennessee apple butter on the other side of that. And the grill is now topping out at about 475 degrees, which is a bit high. We want this down to be about 300. So the tricky part with a charcoal grill is temperature control and stability. So I'm rubbing all that in. And let's pat it in there. And then, so again, this is a little too hot. Just want to 
reduce that again. Um, close one of these entirely. Try to get that down to 300. So the top thermometer is now at 400 degrees. So the next job we got to do is get this entirely wrapped in foil. And uh, so we'll get rid of these and then go ahead and wrap that. And see if we haven't solved our... Okay, so we've got our ribs here. And we've got our foil. I'm putting the shiny side in. The shiny side is a little less sticky. We're going to go ahead and make kind of a hermetic type seal. It means we ease the foil under the ribs here. Top layer of foil under the ribs. On all sides. And then once that's tucked in, let me take the lower layer of foil and put that over the top layer of foil. That sort of does a double seal there. Now, the only concern I got at this point is the fact that the foil is a little thin and we got a hole right there. So, after that, we go ahead and this this away. And truth be told, it would probably be a lot easier if I'd A, done this inside, and B, uh, had a pan or a uh, thicker type of tin foil, aluminum foil. Because I'm actually going to use remainder my aluminum foil up right here it looks like. Just trying to keep a good seal. But I think it'll work out. Alright. So, now we got that in there. Um, our fire is still too hot. So we'll go ahead and close that all the way now. But as you can see, we've got some nice grilling charcoals. It's pretty hot. Those are glowing underneath. And our grill is positioned all the way down because we don't want to sear anything. Um, our side vents are completely open. I think. If I go ahead and put that on there, assuming it doesn't break open, this is the bottom. Go ahead and drop that in. <laughs> All right, we'll leave that like this. We've got a couple places where we need to take them out. I'll try not to. Put that out there. And then we'll get that in there like that. And go ahead and close it. And at this point, the temperature is currently reading about 300 degrees, maybe 325, slowly climbing. Um, but yeah, we'll just do what we can to uh, go ahead and control that temperature. In the meantime, I'm going to set the a timer on my phone to one hour and we'll say 15 minutes, one hour and 10 minutes. Why not? And go ahead and start that. So, yeah. All right. And I got to get this to cool off a little bit more. Uh, hopefully, it'll. It'll decrease its temperature in a little bit, and we'll be good. We'll see how it turns out. Well, it's been an hour, and uh, through my efforts, looks like we got it stabilized at 300 degrees. So I have come out here a couple times to check on it. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's see what we got. It smells pretty good. 
Um, and I'm actually going to put a mixture of vinegar and water, so I got white vinegar and water, and then I'm going to add some more seasoning to the top of that as we grill. I did look up a couple recipes online. If we go ahead and pull the... Oh yeah, that looks amazing. Go ahead and pull the foil off. Oh, oh, that's the result, and that looks really good, can't wait to eat it, but we are going to go ahead and um, wet and season these a little bit, and yeah, I am going to pull the foil off completely, uh, or, well, let's, let's see what happens here, there's a chance he's just going to fall right off, which is a bit problematic. We've <laughs> got quite the pile of, of juice that built up and carburized right there. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, wipe this, or face the top of this, the vinegar water mixture. Apparently this is the Tennessee style, the Tennessee dry rub method. Put some sort of sauce on here vinegar based sauce and I think the vinegar is so it evaporates quick so the thought is you put vinegar water on there and then you put more seasoning on the vinegar causes it to stick and then it evaporates as you put it back on the grill so you go ahead and get that all seasoned a good amount of seasoning. It's a large amount of seasoning. I'm actually going to do the backside too. I don't know if you're supposed to. But, yeah. Let's see if we can pick these up again. Oh boy. That's what the backside looks like. I got way more vinegar and water here than I really need. But, there we go. Paste all this. And might as well flavor the bottom as well. Meanwhile, the fire has kicked up a little bit. I don't know if it's from the grease. I'm going to set this in here for another five minutes. Because honestly, I don't like a whole lot of blackening on my meat. I'll go ahead and close this. And uh, come back in a few minutes. Turn that over again. All right. The timer's going off. Go ahead and open this up. And go ahead and flip these back over. See if we can figure out how to do that. Oops. I yep, don't need that anymore. Oh, that's a nice glazing. All right, so we got quite a bit of smoke there, which is fine, and we'll set that in there for another five minutes. All righty. All right, five minutes later, and we got smoke coming out. I'm ready to open this thing up. I've got a plate here. Uh, before we do that, though, I'm going to cut this about in half so it fits on the plate. Let's see what I can do about. Oops. Looks good. It's very tasty. Cutting on the 
side of it. Take a look at the back side. Looks pretty good. Take that off, put it on the plate. Grab this one, take it off, put it on the plate. Now it's just time to eat it. As you can see from the photos, the ribs turned out pretty good. And uh, they look really good and they actually tasted really good. Um, in hindsight, I would not have put quite as much spice on them. I think actually the seasonal was what put it over the top, is a little on the salty side. But hey, as far as cooking goes, they were cooked great. Um, there's a lot of meat on those spare ribs, and so yeah, I highly recommend it. Um, good luck uh, cooking your own. I will be trying that again. Uh, probably not too regularly, just because ribs are kind of on the expensive side, but. It was uh, it was a good experience and it turned out well. Um, wasn't too difficult. Uh, I learned a little bit. Hopefully you did too. And if you haven't tried ribs on the barbecue before, let me know what you think. If you try them, um, share your notes and your uh, you know if if you have done it before, everyone's expertise is appreciated. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you found that informative. Uh, and again, if you try grilling your own ribs. Uh, let us know how delicious it was or if it was a total flop. Um, and have a wonderful day. See you next time. And uh, yeah, until then, bye for now.